guys, Dave from Gorilla Painting here, and thanks to the folks at Mighty Ape who I work for, we get to take a exclusive sort of first look at Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. Now this went up for pre-order at 10 o'clock this morning New Zealand time, and it's going to be releasing next Saturday the 21st of May. So it is a re-release of uh, the venerable old Warhammer Quest from back in 1995 I believe it was first released uh, with a few updated rules and brand new miniatures and stuff like that. So let's crack open the box. A nice big bag of bases here and then this is the first of the heroes. So this I believe is the Sigma Priest and then he's got the Griffhound there. It's the sort of extra model who can accompany the heroes. Then we have the Witch Elf, the Dwarf Fire Slayer. I'll just try and get that to focus. That's a little bit better. Uh, this is the High Elf Mist Haunter or, or Mist Hunter um, character. And this is the Gaunt Summoner, who's the sort of big bad guy of the um, of the dungeon. Then we have everyone's favourite, the Barbarian. New character here in the um, Stormcast Eternal. And then this sprue and this sprue make the ogre, I think Ogren Thermitage, the um, Zench Ogre, sort of big beastie of the dungeon. So that means these next two sprues here, looks like they're duplicated if I'm not wrong. Yep, so it's two duplicate sprues, and these make stuff like your um, your pink horrors, your Tansgore, the um, sort of bird beastmen, there's uh, a couple of Skaven in here as well, uh, little Skaven assassins, cultists, uh, some of these little Zench goblin things. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, these guys are the little new mini horrors, the brimstone horrors. So I think you go from a pink horror and then when you kill that it turns into these little guys, the blue horrors. And then when you kill them, they turn into two of these little brimstone horrors. Yeah, so the miniatures are looking pretty cool. As you can see, they're not snap fit. There's going to be quite a lot of assembly here. Um, so if it's anything like Death Watch Overkill, the models are all single pose. You can do a little bit of modification to them um, to change positioning of weapons and stuff like that. But you won't be able to fully customize them massively. And you're looking at a solid hour or so of um, of assembly and clean up at least. Because um, there's 44, 44 of these guys all up, as well as the as well as the six heroes. So you're gonna be talking a little while before you can um, you can sit down and start playing the game. So this is one of the downsides with these uh, with these newer miniature games from Games Workshop is you can't just pull stuff out of the box and be gaming in a short period of time. So then we have the guidebook. So I had a flick through this last night. This is your rule book. Um, so it takes you through the game mechanics. This is a good way of showing off all the uh, various different miniatures in the game. So yeah, your Night Quester, Barbarian, Mr. Weaver, your Horrors, that's the uh, Ogred Thermitage dude, and the Tansgores. And then over here, that's the Witch Elf, Dwarf, War Priest, these uh, Grot Scutlings, Acolytes, Skaven Death Runner, and then the Gort Summoner with his Familiars. So there's four Familiars in there, and the Familiars actually look really cool. So it's pretty easy to understand, you've got these uh, sort of nice pictures to um, illustrate what's going on and the uh, information around the around the outside, adversary phase, later rounds and stuff like that. So I didn't play Warhammer Quest myself back in the day, I was a big Hero Quest fan instead, but from my understanding this is going to be working in a similar way 
So uh, as you enter a chamber, you fight monsters, and then you randomly draw from the exploration deck, which is this deck of cards here. And that will tell you what the next room is as you, as you move in. So the combination of these cards and the second book, which is the adventure book, will plan out the dungeon as you're moving through. So basically you'll see on these exploration cards it says read, uh, read passage 81 and roll twice on encounter table B. So passage, ta passage 81 in here is your flavor text. So um, it gives you a bit of information about what's going on in that room. Uh, gives you some special rules for that, uh, for that room as well. And then um, tells you to roll on the encounter table, which gives you the monsters you're going to be fighting. Now each of those monsters has some behaviors that it can do. And those behaviors are sort of randomly applied. So try and find one in here. So here we see the, uh, this is the Ogre Thermitage, and here's his behavior table here. So you roll a 2d6, and that will say what he's going to do. He may um, cast some spells, he may you know, charge through people, um, cast some healing, and things like that. So the nice thing about Warhammer Quest is you don't need someone playing the monsters. Everyone can play a PC. And then your monsters are controlled by one player each turn, who then rolls on the random encounters, or the random um, behavior table. And that controls what they're going to do. So as well, we have these skill cards. And treasure cards. So these are stuff that you'll pick up as you go through your adventure, and will make your heroes stronger. And there's the six cards for the PCs, so that let you, lets you keep your track of your dice, um, says what you can do in terms of your weapon actions and stuff. You've got move, value, agility, and save. And then um, your extra skills and stuff down here on the bottom. You get 25 dice, and they're all in different colors so that your heroes have different dice, so you can keep track of them. Instruction book. You can see there's a bit of assembly required here. The way they're designed is really cool because it's sort of the pieces hide the undercuts and stuff like that really nicely. So they do assem should assemble really nice if they're like the um, Death Watch Overkill or Betrayal of Kalth ones. And then we have all the board tiles. So I won't pop these all out now because it'll take a little while. But there's 13 double sided tiles like this. And then you have all your game counters and stuff like that in here as well. There's also a companion app um, which can help you keep track of your hero and skills and stuff like that. So that's everything which is in the box. As you can see, it's got some really nice artwork on everything, presentations to a really high standard. So now we'll take a little bit of a look at uh, some of the extra swag you can pick up on launch day. So here's the swag that's going to be available on launch day. So basically, stores who purchase over a certain amount for their store get access to one of these launch packs, which comes with a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, you, there are these A6 size art cards. So there's one for each of the characters. It has a little bit of a, um, a blurb about that sort of character's theme. And then on the back... It's just uh, some of the box art here. So stores get quite a few of these. And then there's these little badges here. So again, there's one per character. Basically, each launch pack has uh, 15 of each of these. Um, so I'm not sure how your local store is going to be giving them out. But there's a good chance you'll be able to pick up your favorite or your second favorite because everyone's probably going to take the Barbarian to start with. We get to on the a little bit more of the rarer side. So each launch pack has five packs of these holo cards here. So these cards have um, the same information as the character cards in the pack. They're just done to a different style. So you got different artwork on the back, 
and they're sort of in this sort of hollow shiny um, scheme here so the cool thing about these is we've got the six main characters and then there's four extra ones now currently these four extra ones are only available in um, in these launch packs so they're probably going to be quite collector items so this lets you play as a slaughter priest as one of the uh, Uruk or the Dwarf Fire Slayer Rune Masters. If you want to go down the Chaos Bent, you can come in as a Zench Sorcerer Lord or a Knight Venator. So, what I can see being very possible is as we continue down with the Warhammer Quest, is that GW will release more of these card packs or um, put them in White Dwarf and stuff like that to introduce more of the characters from Age of Sigma into this system as well and then finally we have the rune of zench so this is like a poker chip um, and you sort of pass this around um, during the game to show who's the rune marked player so it's the rune marked player who is controlling the monsters each turn so launch packs get 10 of these um, so again these are going to be yeah fairly collectible items so yeah, thanks for watching guys um, down here in New Zealand, the RRP for this is 315, um, but you'll be able to pick it up from local stores like Mighty Ape for a little bit cheaper. We've got it for 270. Um, offshore, you're looking at probably a much more reasonable price if you're in the uh, the UK or the US. But as I said, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll have more content coming up for Warhammer Quest shortly, um, including some assembly stuff and things like that, and a bit of a review of the miniatures once they're all put together. So until next time, guys, happy modeling.